Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about consumption function with the psychological law of consumption. Consumption function shows the relationship between income and consumption. Consumption function shows the relationship between income and consumption. It shows how change in income affect consumption. So consumption is a function of income. C represent consumption, Y represent income. Consumption depend on income. As income increase, consumption also increase. As income fall, consumption also fall. Obviously, when people earn more, they spend more. But when they earn less, they spend less. Now we will see consumption schedule. Consumption schedule shows how much household plan to spend at various level of disposable income. Consumption schedule shows how much household plan to spend at various level of disposable income. Disposable income means amount of money that remain after paying taxes for doing consumption, saving or investment. In first column we have income or we can say the disposable income. Second column we have consumption. So this table shows how much household plan to spend at various level of disposable income. Here you can see as income increasing, consumption also increasing. So there is direct relationship between between income and consumption but here you can see at a zero income our consumption is 80 but why this consumption will be called autonomous consumption autonomous consumption is necessary consumption which we have to do even our income is zero autonomous consumption is necessary consumption which we have to do even our income is zero for example we have to buy food even our income is zero either we use our past saving or borrow money from someone but we have to buy food for survival so consumption on food will be called autonomous consumption which we have to do even our income is zero on x axis we have income y axis we have disposable income this uh, cc curve shows our consumption function you can see our consumption curve start from c not from zero because uh, even our zero income we have to do some autonomous consumption this oc will be called autonomous consumption now we will see average uh, propensity to consume Average propensity to consume is the ratio of consumption to income. That means average propensity to consume shows percentage of income that we spend on goods and services. Here we have income, here we have consumption. Formula of calculating APC is C over Y. Here C is consumption, Y is income. So in first case C is 80 and Y is 100. So our average propensity to consume is 0 0.8 that means 80 percent of our income we are consuming in second case our average propensity to consume is 0 0.75 that means 75 percent part of our income we are consuming on x axis income on y axis consumption this a point shows 80 percent of income we are consuming this b point shows 75 percent of income we are consuming now we will see marginal propensity to consume. Marginal propensity to consume is the ratio of change in consumption to change in income. That means marginal propensity to consume shows how much consumption change in response to change in income. And formula of calculating MPC delta C over delta Y. Delta C represent change in consumption, delta Y represent change in income. First column we have income, second column we have uh, consumption, third column we have change in consumption, fourth column we have change in income, last column we have MPC marginal propensity to consume. As we know we can calculate change in consumption when we minus current consumption from previous consumption. Similar we can calculate change in income when we minus current income from previous uh, income. In first case, we don't know previous year of uh, income as well as previous year of consumption. That's why in first case, we put a dash. Second case, you can see current consumption is 150, previous consumption is 80. 
150 minus 80 is equal to 70. This 70 will be called change in consumption. Previous income is 100. Current income is 200. 200 minus 100 is equal to 100. This 100 will be called change in income. Similar we can calculate for other case. Third column we have MPC. Here you can see change in consumption is 70. Change in income is 100. That's why our MPC is equal to 0 0.7. In next case, change in consumption is 50. Change in income is 100. That's why our MPC is 0 0.5. Uh, X axis is income, Y axis is consumption. When our income is OY, consumption is OC. Suppose income increase from Y to Y1. As a result, consumption increase from C to C1. That's why this part will be called change in consumption and this part will be called change in income. So, we can say that AB is change in consumption and CB is change in income. AB over CB is equal to marginal propensity to consume. Suppose AB is 80, CB is 100. That's why MPC is equal to 0 0.8. Now, we'll see saving a function. Saving a function shows the relationship between income and saving. Saving is function of income. As saving Y income. As income increase, saving also increase. We can calculate saving when we minus consumption from income. C consumption, Y income as saving. When we minus consumption from income, it will become equal to saving. First column income, second column consumption, last column saving. When we minus income from consumption, it will become equal to saving. Initially, our saving is uh, minus uh, 4. But why? Because initially our income is uh, 0, but we are doing a 4 autonomous uh, consumption. For doing this autonomous consumption, we are using our past saving. That's why initially our saving is minus uh, 4. On x axis is income, y axis is saving. Initially, our saving goes in a negative because initially for uh, doing consumption, we are using our past saving. At uh, E point, our saving is 0, but as income increasing, saving also increasing. This S, S represent saving a curve. Now, we will see average propensity to save or we can say that APS. APS is a ratio of a saving to income. That means APS shows percentage of income that we save. Formula of calculating APS, S over Y. S saving, Y income. First column income, second column saving, last column APS. In first case, S is 20, Y is 100. So, our APS is 0 0.2. Second case, S is 50, Y is 200. So, our APS is 0 0.25. XX is income, YX is saving. SS shows saving function. At A point, APS is 0 0.2. At B point, APS is 0 0.25. Now, we will see marginal propensity to save or we can say that MPS. MPS is ratio of change in saving to change in income. That means MPS shows how much saving a change due to change in income. Formula of calculating MPS, delta S over delta Y. Delta S change in saving, delta Y change in income. First column income, second column uh, saving, third column change in saving, fourth column change in income, last column MPCS. Initially, we put a dash because we don't know about previous year uh, saving and income. Here you can see current saving uh, 50, previous saving 20. 50 minus 20 is equal to 30. This 30 will be called change in saving. Next case, current saving 100, previous 50. 100 minus 50 is equal to 50. This 50 will be called a change in saving. Similar, we can calculate for income. Here you can see in first case, MPS is 30 over 100. Because 30 is a change in saving, 100 is change in income. That's why our MPS equal to 0 0.3. In second case, change in saving 50, change in income is 100. That's why MPS equal to 0 0.5. On X axis is income, Y axis is saving. When income increase from Y to Y1, 
saving also increase from S to S1. This AB part shows change in income, the CB part shows change in saving. CB over AB will be called MPS, CB 60, AB 100. So, it will become equal to 0 0.6, 0 0.6 will be called MPS. Now, we will see psychological law of consumption. This law is given by J.M. Keynes. According to this law, as income increase, consumption will also increase, but consumption will not increase as much as income increase. According to this law, as income increase, consumption will also increase, but consumption will not increase as much as income increase. Or we can say that as income increase, percentage of income spent on consumption start decreasing because percentage of savings start increasing as income increase. For example, when I was unemployed, I had so many unfulfilled needs. But when I got a job, within a few years of salary, I fulfilled my almost basic needs. I have purchased car, home, laptop. Now, as my salary will increase, I will spend less and save more because my basic needs has almost fulfilled. That's why now as my income will increase, I will spend less and save more. This is basic psychology of consumer and a rational consumer think about saving. So, we can say that according to this law, as income increase, no doubt consumption will also increase, but consumption will not increase as much as income increase because people start saving. Now we understand psychological law of consumption with the help of this table. Income, consumption, saving. Initially income zero but still uh, 50 consumption. For this consumption consumer using past saving so saving is negative. Next case income less than consumption so consumer using uh, past saving so uh, saving is negative. In next case income consumption equal to each other so saving is zero. Here you can see income 150, consumption 125. So in this case, APC 0.83, that means here consumer using 83 percentage of income. In next case, APC is 0.75, that means consumer using 75 percentage of income for spending. In next case, APC 0.7, that means consumer spending 70 percentage of his income. So here you can see as income increasing, consumer is spending less percentage on consumption because he start saving. Here you can see simultaneously saving of consumer is increasing. So we can say that according to psychological law of consumption, as income increase, no doubt consumption will also increase, but increase in consumption will smaller as compared to increase in income because simultaneously consumer start saving. Now we see a diagram. On x axis income, y axis consumption. This O Y, this line shows income. This C C curve shows consumption function. Initially, consumption is more than income. Consumption K Y, but income is T Y. So, for doing a consumption, we have to use our past saving. So, KT shows uh, dis saving or we can say that KT shows negative uh, saving. At E point, income and consumption both are equal to each other. After E point, as income increasing, no doubt consumption also increasing, but increase in consumption is smaller as compared to increase in income. Here you can see RY2 is income, but consumption is PY2. Consumption is less than income, RP is equal to saving. Similar here you can see LY3 income, RY3 consumption, LR will be called saving. So as income increasing, we are consuming less but saving more. This is about psychological law of consumption. So this is all about consumption function. I think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye. Take care.